Concert movement number one. The basic head bob. Ready, go. Oh, the weather outside is... Like, it's a nice weather day here in Des Moines. But it's a, it looks like night of the comet outside. Like, where did everybody go? Dan, are you outside, like, at all? I know you're a motorcycle dude. There's, like, no one in the streets. You know, I didn't notice that today. But... I, it's been the last week. It's like, I don't know if there's, like, an official, like, clock. And what's that? Downtown just empties. You know, it was kind of empty when I came in. But the parking garage was full. I had to park on the sixth floor. I normally do anyway. It's just uh, weird to me. If there's nobody out and about, it's not like it's a icy cold. I mean, yeah, it's cold. But maybe, maybe Obama got some people some jobs instead of phones, hey, and they're working. That Obama phone was a Reagan era initiative to get people landlines because it's really hard to get a job. And then during the Bush administration, they switched it over to cell phones. Can, can we not just agree that the lady that did that was fairly ignorant? I am I will never deny the existence of low information voters. I'm, I mean, Otherwise, we wouldn't have a Republican party. I mean, party. It, it was funny, not factual in any sense, and not representative fairly of your party. No, uh, what was what? Look, that's just, yeah. I mean, if she started talking about her ovaries, maybe we'd have had something. Not the brightest poll, but what got me was when we saw Tea Party groups in Ohio using that video as a fundraiser saying, send us money so we can air this as a TV commercial. But it was funny. Maybe they're just sad, bit, really. But it um, was funny. I laughed. You chuckled. You know, you chuckled. No, oh, no she I didn't. went. Come oh, on. Yeah, I was like, ooh, no, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I got me a bomb phone. It was great. Like it, it should just come. Whether it's the even even just her accent was funny. Everything about that was funny. What I don't like about that is I people tend to focus just on the fact that she's black and got a phone, well, and that that, that bothers when me. they that where the hype came from. Yeah, was we're gonna. Look at her. And the, she's not representative of, of, of the black race as a whole. Uh, if I don't any, think any one person. Yeah, know, but I, 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 but she's not she's not a good medium there. Let's say, uh, and she she's probably not even a good medium of the lower class. I, no, I she's thought, she's a fringe. And, and no, I played the video of the the Romney supporters. You which, know, which all, one? Uh, there he was, had supporters. See, yeah. I've been trying to find videos of there was, them, and no, there usually was an, they're uh, just uh, empty. An Ohio rally. It was the one where Meatloaf sang. and He got Meatloaf? And Ted Nugent. Oh, a hell of a band there. Yeah, Ted, a, Ted Nugent offered to have gay sex with a guy if we could find somebody more uh, more uh, giving than he is to children or something like that. Like the one that he uh, got custody, custody of from his her parents so that he could have sex with her without... Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> that story. was that was uh, that was Ted Nugent back in the day. Yeah, to avoid uh, statutory charges, basically got a girl signed over to him. Hmm, I, th- that's new to me. I, I can't. The man called me a blood brother once, so you know I'm I'm okay with talking about this. But but he uh, I don't he, think he knew who he was. He looked at to. a report, reporter right in the eye and said that he would suck his uh, uh, genitals if uh, he he could find somebody more generous than Ted Nugent. Well, I think Bill Gates giving away his billions I, I, of dollars. Immediately, I went to Bill Gates. I think someone is entitled to a... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Are we calling them freedom jobs now? Because I I just... I, 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 I think Ted better get some knee pads. I think Ted should I'm watch sure, what he says. I'm sure they make him an animal print. I, I understand the Would frust- he be wearing the loincloth, though? I don't know. That's I mean, the question. The problem with, with that is, would you really trust Ted Nugent around your bite. naked... Yeah. Yeah. With any kind of instrument, including his teeth. Around this is going to be one of those shows, because we already have to discuss Glenn Beck's bodily fluids. Oh, I know. It's okay. These don't. This is just going to be, this is post-election. This is silliness. Talk. It's a little, yeah. Maddie says she's an adult, so it's okay to talk around her. Oh, are you 18 now? She is 18. Okay, how long have you been 18? A couple days. June? Oh, okay. So you were. You so were, she's like old now. Yeah. Middle Too old age. for Ted Nugent. Yeah. So you're safe. That's good. <laughs> and Michael Jackson. Oh, wait, yeah. he's dead. Yeah. I, Mel Reynolds is getting back in politics, though. Mel Reynolds. Remember, you, do you remember Mel Reynolds? He was one of those crooked. Yes. Yeah, I like politics. I used to like politics. I just have been disenfranchised. I, well, it's one of late. the. 
And again, it's one of those things. Why, like local news, 5, 13, 8, I guess, do we count 17 as 13 I, now? But what, what do they hype? All right? They hype uh, local high school sports, mm-hmm. and they hype weather. Yeah. All right? Those are the things that they— That's why I never watch uh, either one of them. But I got it, Google. And the, there's a reason they do that. It's because it's the only thing that they're going to have every day. There's always going to be weather, and there's I, always— you know, some semblance of high school sports. And the good thing about high schoolers is we get older and they stay the same age. No, we're not going dazed and confused. But I'm saying they hype these things and they it's cover the, them extensively and they but that's devote the only a lot of resources. good Matthew McConaughey move me. So you gotta. You should like Contact. I don't know if I've seen Contact. You've never seen Contact? I don't. I just got like I had an echo, but it's yeah. a Carl Sagan. Uh, I don't know who that is. See. What? You can you could. Uh, it, I'll, I'll Google him in a thousand words or less. Tell me everything you know about Kurt Cameron. Oh, uh, he was on that one show. I used to watch Growing Pains, but what does he do now? Uh, he's an evangelical. You watched guy. one of his buddies' movies last I, night. I did. I did watch the. one And you don't movie. know who Carl Sagan is. You've never seen Cosmos. My well, obviously no. No. Oh man. Sorry. I'm sorry. Let you, I don't follow Kirk Cameron around, though. Like I know some people really like the guy. I think kind of in general he's a little goofy. You're more of a Brian Fisher kind of fellow. Uh, again, I don't know who that is. He's the spokesperson for uh, the American Family Association. Yeah, see, and I, pretty much anything involved with politics I would wash my hands of. Uh, as far as uh, religious you should, you guys— You should watch Con. I think I'm, it's on Netflix. Yeah, as far as religious guys, I'd be more like a Mark Driscoll or a— uh, I don't know who that is. Yeah, exactly. See, I, I like Carl people, Sagan. I like the people that actually know what they're talking about. Uh, man, not that Kirk doesn't. I just don't know much about him. Kirk's a little weird. Gone Kirk, off the deep well, end. But but it looks like he's going to have company now. Yeah, the he, kid from uh, Two and a Half Men. I saw that. I thought, joined some sort of cult? Her, according to her, his mom. Yeah, some sort of one of those religious he, cults that wants you to you know renounce all your worldly possessions. Sure, which is a very he, convenient thing then to attract. Uh, gullible 19 year olds who might have been shielded from the real world a bit and are make eight million dollars a year that seems like a good get yeah i've never been a cult recruiter but that seems like someone that i would want and i don't know specifics about that but i did see uh just off of what i read there was a pentecostal movement and uh not all pentecostals this way but some of them are uh, what call are called oneness pentecostals which i would say is heresy and cultish is that the snake handling people uh well pentecostals would be they would be in that group. They're they're really reliant on uh, a continuation of uh, miracles, you know. Uh, which I believe- so they're insane clown posse fans. Do they are they afraid of magnets? You've seen that one, they, right? probably. I mean, they're they're kind of different. I don't I don't want to insult all of them because certainly not all of them this way. I do- I know, but some of them might even be listening. I don't want to be quoted as insulting all Pentecostals, mm. but the ones I've come across are are pretty. They're the kind of people that will lay hands on you, expect you to get healed. You know, say stuff like he's coming in. Ted a Nugent then a Pentecostal? Uh, he might be. I don't know. You know, but they'll do the well, he's coming in a con. Uh, he's coming in a Honda. He's coming in a Honda. Or I need a real and coke, a and coke. You know, those kind of weird. Blabbering, you're like, did you just say you're coming in a Honda? Sarah Palin's church might be. I Michelle don't. Bachman, they do that kind of stuff. Is that- Michelle Bachman's a little awkward. I don't even want to talk about her. But um, yeah, so no so, kids making eight million dollars yeah, a year. It's 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 sketchy. And while I appreciate his statements because it shows that someone could come to the cor- correct conclusion for the wrong reasons. Um, two and a half men is filth, but not I think for the reasons that he was. Uh, describing. You're and just mad they got rid of Charlie Sheen, no aren't you? Reason to, no, there's never been a reason to watch. It was, it's not, I don't understand why it's so well watched. I, I have I, no clue. I I've don't watched, get it. I've watched several episodes, not just one or two, but probably less than 20, Jen more than two. watches the, the, re, the Charlie Sheen reruns. Yeah. I have I, no idea why you'd watch anything involving Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, well, I've never seen an Ashton Kutcher one. I've, I've never seen I have seen no it. idea how they finished Charlie's character one off. of those. I think they, they just had him, like, hit by a train or something. Yeah, it's mildly, it's mildly amusing, uh, but overall, it's not something you should... I, miss I don't find it humorous. The, well, it's 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 kind of potty mouth humor, and, and on top of that, sitcoms used to be something you could watch as a family. You know, you had like uh, Family Matters with Steve Urkel, that, and that stuff that, that you could watch on a Friday night as a family. Well, you and that's I, I you can't and, do that anymore. But even going back to like All in the Family, sure, um, you would get 
you could discuss things that were a little, you know, over the top, but thanks to standards and practices and the, the network sensors, you would have to find an intelligent way. Well, it's like um, different strokes discussed a lot of kind of controversial oh, issues. Poor Dudley. But but they weren't offensive about it, and they've lost that filter now. Well, yeah, I think it. Well, it's the problem is back when Dudley was having a really bad special episode or a special episode of Blossom, or <laughs> they would uh, talk about she's divorced, which means Blossom's available. Are what you one of those six, people that though? thought she was hot because she had the biggest yes. schnoz? I oh, still my, think she is. That schnoz was ridiculous. You know who was hot? Who I always liked? Did six. You, did you ever watch Boy Meets World? Uh, I never did. No, but I hear it's coming back. They had a they had a chick on that name like Tamara or something. Oh yeah, Danielle yeah. Fischel or whatever. And I used to think she was hot when I was a kid. And, and the, on top of that, the what was the one with? Uh, oh, I can't remember his name now. He was in the Wizard the, or the the Wiz the move the video game movie. Michael Jackson. No. Oh <laughs> no, uh, oh. Jenny Lewis. Yeah. Yeah, she, I thought he she... touched my bra- the Wiz the Wizard the Wiz was the. Michael Jackson. No, Mayor I'm talking Ross. about the video game. But the boy, the wizard, the boy, power glove. Yeah, it's but, so bad. What was the boy in there? What was his name? The uh, I'm, that I'm was not Fred gonna, Savage. Fred wasn't Savage. It? Yeah. He was in. He was in a in another show where he was in love with a girl named Winnie. What show was that? Oh, The Wonder Years. Yeah, I used to think she was hot too when I was a kid. You wouldn't like her. She's a mathematician now. That's like science. Well, it's not like science because <laughs> she can't. She wouldn't want to discuss the zero plus zero question. I would have. Um, she would probably have a mathematical explanation. I doubt it, because you really can't m- mathematically explain that, but I do digress. Uh, although, uh, still, the, the top of the, the pyramid was all, will always be Angela Chase from My So-Called Life. That's all. I'm trying to remember that one now. Claire Danes. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Because we all have a little smoking. Brian Krakow uh, in us. As long as you didn't... You, long- you might have been a little bit of a Jordan Conolato. Hmm. I don't. Again, I don't know these names. I'm sure I know who they are, but I was I was Brian Krakow. I was, yeah. But I didn't really. Brenda Hampton. Brenda Hampton. Why should was, I know that? That's well, she was the creator of, of my so called life, and it was it was gritty, and it was you know they would touch on tough subjects like you know suicide, and eating disorders. Sure. It was very nineties. It was. But it wasn't. 90s. But it they wasn't. Had, they had Juliana Hatfield but on it playing wasn't, an angel, which even, I think was the best casting. Even in the even in the '90s, they were so much better than they are today. I mean, you know, but, but you, now Brenda Hampton does Secret Life of American Teenager, which is just like cheesy schlock. I've never seen it. It's horrible. It's well, awful. It's terrible. It's it's like un. I get invested in these dramas like Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad's great. I I, I love that show. I'm, I'm invested in Sons of Anarchy, although it's kind of gone down. I haven't. I I start. I watched like the first two or three episodes. Didn't. Yeah, it it's it's getting better by degrees, but it was okay the first season. I'm a motorcycle guy, so I'm kind of naturally drawn to it. The, la- the a couple of the seasons kind of lost me, and it's starting to pick me back up. And they're kind of wrapping it down. Yeah, to where I saw it's something got about a, like a, some meth lab exploding with guns. Oh, and... that was like that was like yeah. I, I got up one. I got up to meth lab exploding with guns, and I'm like. I'm gonna find something else. There's got to be like a sensible eerie run. Yeah, on. no, yeah. If you if you're not a motorcycle guy, you probably dropped not, off. I don't it. own any denim. No, yeah, I don't. No leather and no denim. So I, I own jeans. I don't, I don't have a jacket made out of denim though. I've never. You don't own jeans? No, I'm really. Not a jeans guy. You are wearing pants today. Well, I wear is, pants. Yeah, I, that's nice. But normally you wear shorts. So. I, every day I can get away with it pretty much. Are you and Mac? Are both now that very I don't have. A job with a is that the a connection? Dress code? You and Mac shorts? No, because he would even wear them. No, he's still into Mac wears dress shoes, no socks, shorts. Yeah, and a right. and a and a Hope t shirt every day. Yeah, he, I mean, I love so the he guy. Needs someone to dress him, but it's it's very it's it's interesting. He needs like one of those virtual assistants or whatever, and you just like take a picture of every piece of clothing in your wardrobe and have just, just switch have it. someone you know from a third world country over the internet. Kind of put together an outfit of the day, and they can keep track of. It, it would be okay if it was business casual shoes. I think we could just get along with. No, the, there's nothing. It's it's like sauna he, casual. Sorry, Matt. Yeah, well, he flip flops seemed it would be fitting. He hates flip flops, so. Uh, He's got to have weird feet or something. Uh, there, I got pictures. I you got pictures of it. 
You're one of those people. I, I understand a lot of things, we, and we, I've been on the internet a long time. You feet people freak me out. No, no, I'm not. A, we have the uh, no flip flops ad from uh, from the oh, Mac McCoy thing, and so okay. I got I've got video of him in flip flops where he's shaking his hand head. All right, but, we, we need to move on to something less uh, less disturbing. How about Glenn Beck's bodily fluids? Oh, geez. So because, is this actually his urine? Uh, turns out, no. It was advertised as. For those of you who don't follow Glenn Beck. Welcome to the reality-based community. Uh, but I saw this, and and Simon Malloy actually uh, is a writer, and I think nailed it. Is it uh, uh, overpaying for unfiltered waste? Uh, seems like an ideal metaphor for the Glenn Beck experience. Uh, and what this is, because uh, I guess it's been now twenty-five years since you know earmuffs kids. Piss Christ became a thing, and that's the the photograph uh, of a Jesus statue in a uh, beaker of urine. Um, but for twenty five years now, I guess when uh, the outrage du jour um, like is late or something, or he right, takes a day off, um, takes like a half day or something. And they, they, they need to find something to be outraged about because if you're not angry, uh, then Fox ain't doing its job. Um, I think Huckabee was talking about it like a month ago. Uh, it occasionally uh, makes an uh, appearance. It's not the actual jar. It's a, it's, it's a photograph uh, of uh, this jar and the lighting. And I'm the least artistic person I know, so I'm not in any way, shape, or form qualified to... Uh, describe this as, as as art or not i i just know that it caused a hubbub which i think is uh, the reason a lot of artists kind of do their thing it's why andre the giant has a posse um, so i get that so i guess in that ter- sense it's successful um, but it pops up every now and again and usually some sort of fundamentalist shows up with a knife uh, occasionally they get it usually they're stopped sure um but I, I, I guess to, and, and according to Glenn Beck's website, uh, he did this to expose the hypocrisy. Yeah, I'm reading it on the blazer of, of those on the left. But I, I, I don't think there's any left wing outrage. It's more of he puts this thing up on eBay <laughs> and claims that it's Glenn Beck's urine mm-hmm. and a dashboard uh, Obama. Now. If you're like me, you have experience in knowing that uh, anything involving bodily waste, eBay will pull down. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't be able to search for anything uh, other than probably used underwear, socks. Again, you feet people. I don't get you. <laughs> I'm willing to live in a world where if it's safe, sane, and consensual, go right ahead. Feet people freak me out because uh, there's nothing attractive uh, about feet at all. What if they're a really pretty set no, of feet? No, there's nothing about the feet. People are... I don't get it. I don't support it. I don't endorse it. I think people need help. Oh, you're just a hater. Uh, I, I'm willing, you know, law, I, I don't care how many girls and how many cups you've got or whatever, just the feet people, you know. Oh, wait a second. You're good with the two girls, one If cup? it's safe, sane, and consensual. Okay, That's... there is nothing sane about I... eating somebody's fecal matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wasn't going to go that far. <laughs> There's gonna... nothing sane See, again, about it. This was back in, this is the all, you know. Back in the day, right, we could talk around these things. We didn't have to be so explicit. Well, we don't have to talk around them, though. I, I talk around them. But but you shouldn't. There's nothing sane about that. That's I Look, what, what, what Brad, Brazilian, pe- I take a crap what Brazilian you- <laughs> people do for $150 a person, all right, is, is up to them. Well, I, now they got a new one out called Cake Farts. Oh, that's old. That well, that's up there with pudding. S- somebody just told me that yesterday. I yeah, it's just, I, I refuse to watch I, any you, of them. You probably should. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I, there's my, things my, in this world I don't need to see. And that's definitely one of them. You can't put these things on eBay. Um, otherwise, again, there would be millions. It, this might be a stimulus program. Billions of dollars in like you know used underwear uh, being sold, and that's just yeah. And eBay doesn't want any part of that, and I completely understand. So uh, the description intentionally said PP. Because they knew it would get pulled. And it did. So all this is a publicity stunt. And look, I, I'm a former uh, morning radio guy too, uh, without the drugs or adult conversion to Mormonism. So there are some differences between 
You're much more sane. Back and I, thank you. Uh, Just because you didn't but he know knew Mormonism. that this was going to get pulled and wanted to make a, a fuss out of it. The, the, the funny thing is, it, there's no outrage. And his own website says, you know, this is to expose the hypocrisy. Who's, I mean, there are people going, huh? Uh, there are people making fun of it. Uh, it turns out it wasn't actual urine, it was uh, beer. Which, what's a Mormon doing with beer in the first place? Uh, peeing it out. No, well, some would argue, yeah, a good chunk. You don't buy beer, you just uh, rent it. Or maybe uh, it's an American beer. Maybe it's a Budweiser product. Well, you know, conveniently, this urine-soaked Obama figure, and I'll bring up the picture here in a moment because I'm that good of a producer for you. You're welcome. Yeah, bring uh, um, it. Obama's wrapped in an American flag. Now, that actually kind of upsets me. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's nice to see, again, the right handling this loss uh, with grace and style. Um, well, people don't handle losses with grace and style. No. We, we knew that was going to... It didn't matter who won. Everybody else was going to throw a fit. But, but the, the right wing... Well, the problem with the right wing was that they were all convinced that they were going to win by listening to guys like Beck and Hannity. And well, Rush. you also got to factor in something. I don't think that you've drawn a clear line to. He really believes... In, um, what's his name? Romney. That's right. The guy that ran for president. He really actually believes in Mormonism. He thought this was a God-ordained election. Well... Are, are you up to speed on the white horse uh, prophecy? Mm -mm. Uh, this is part of, of Mormon belief that when the Constitution is hanging by a thread, something a lot of conservatives uh, believe to the point of endorsing secession, uh, it will be a Mormon who comes in and, and saves the Union. Um, I mean, that's I, I, I don't know if that was up to speed. I think far more likely... You don't look to uh, Joseph Smith. You would look to JFK, uh, of all people. And that was kind of the end of the anti-Catholic leagues uh, in their uh, time out there really uh, mainstreamed it. And, you know, Romney had to do the same thing JFK did. JFK had to stand up and say, yeah, you know what? If I'm elected president, I'm not going to take my orders from the Pope. Um you know, the people saying are, 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 are silly. Romney had to do that back in, in 2007 uh, and say, no, you know, the, the, the revelations of the Mormon church won't affect uh, my policy. Now, the revelations from Grover Norquist, yes, but from God, no. And so he had to give his, and I think the goal was to elect uh, Mitt Romney to make uh, Mormonism as mainstream um, as, well, any other religion founded in the last 150 years. Right up there with Scientology and uh, the Heaven's Gate people. <laughs> what was David Koresh? Uh, he was just the Branch just Davidian. The, oh, the Branch Davidians, thank you. That was uh, on the tip of my tongue, and I couldn't quite remember. But You know how many of those guys can fit in a Honda? All of them. <laughs> now. <laughs> well, four. Oh. Two in the front seat. Two in the back seat and the rest in the ashtray. Oh, well, see, you. It's all of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just more blatant about it. Um, see, their blatantness works because it doesn't involve poo poo. But the ashtray joke's funny. I mean, burnt people is hilarious, right? Oh, wait, um, no, probably not. Not so much, no. But No, that's okay. Here, here's the eBay listing. I got a picture of it for you. Okay, bring up the, the pic. Yeah, and got up to 11,000. $300 and it was going to go to, you know, uh, his company's tax write-offs or, or whatever. Yeah, it's wrapped in an American flag. He 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 pretended to urinate on our flag. Way to go, Glenn. That's Well, and that's the the other flip side. If if Piss Christ is so offensive that, you know, for the last 25 years when you need like a go-to hey, rubes and marks, here's something to be mad about again. Um I don't know if doing it is necessarily the, or at least implying. It doesn't even have the guts to full on. Like, see, and this is the difference, I guess, between talk radio. A morning show DJ. And I have set things on fire. And look, I'm not proud of this, but I got my career actually not, as a night guy. not a, And I used to love um, the stunts and the what crazy thing can I get away with. I took particular delight 
and I believe he's somewhere in Iowa now. The night guy on the other Top 40 station went by the name of Mike Savage. This is before Michael Savage went, uh, you know, mainstream. I, I think Michael Savage, the talk guy, was still Dr. Wiener back then. Uh, but his name was Mike Savage. I, I gave out his home phone number once. That was probably a bad idea. Told everyone his real name. It's Mike Binks, by the way. Which is uh, hilarious like that the these guy. people had fake... I don't understand the fake name. I don't name. understand the fake name uh, either. Uh, I don't know what was wrong with Binks. And this was before... Well, no, actually, this was after. This was like a year after Star Wars Episodes One, So maybe that was it. Nobody maybe wants didn't to, want yeah, to go I, that, with that the Jar Jar I understand. Jar you don't thing. want to be... So I guess, I guess in that Misa sense... Jar Jar Binks. Um, you would want to avoid... I would... Like when he would do like remotes, like at the mall... I would have them page a lost child and uh, or have them page like Mike Savage sucks over the intercom system. So we, Mike Savage sucks. Mike Savage, you know, pick up a white courtesy phone. Um, they would do like event. We were across the street from the Jefferson City Mall. And, you know, once in a blue moon, they would do like they. I remember one time they were giving out Destiny's Child tickets. Um, making people like. Bill, I don't know what the connection was, but basically Bill, like, um, those tongue depressor craft houses, you've seen those, right? And so you'd have to spend, like, a half hour, and it was supposed to be some sort of wacky connection tie into Destiny's Child, and I had tickets to go. So I just walked across the street uh, on my cell phone um, and be like, hey, you you don't want to build this, dude. Here, you want to just pair of tickets? <laughs> like, don't win these. I'm just going to give you tickets to go away. So I had just people, like, quitting <laughs> their contest. Because, uh, like, why compete? I'm just going to let you. I get that stuff. I understand. A real, you know, committed morning show would have actually peed in the jar. Um, especially with the amount of coffee and caffeine and energy drinks. It should have been no problem whatsoever. So it shows a lack of commitment there, I think, to begin with. But I, I, if anything, and I, I was trying to explain this to uh, a Glenn Beck fan uh, on Twitter, um, like, isn't the fact that there isn't outrage, right? No one really cares about the, the item. They care more about Glenn Beck being kind of a weirdo. And, you know, it's... There's outrage out there, really, somewhere. So so our point's proven, even though there's no real outrage. Like, shouldn't that tell you something? Um, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm wasting my, my, my time and effort, but uh, trying to poke holes kind of in the bubble. Because if you go read the article on The Blaze, which I, I don't recommend, it's all about the, you know, the left-wing outrage. Like... There is none. You knew the eBay. You're outraged right now. I'm not outraged. You're pissed. Look at you. You look angry. Your face is getting red. You're I'm about, shaking. I'm about to complete Hulk out. Yeah, yeah you're, yeah. you're sweating profusely. It's a great publicity stunt. It is from, you know. I'm actually outraged that he thought it was funny to put an American from flag in pee. One artist to, you know, another. I, I can I can, I can see, you know, the, the machinations behind the scene at work. And it's a great publicity stunt. And I... Uh, I just don't know if necessarily that's the image. You know what would have been more dynamic uh, is a picture want. of him peeing on the Obama Chia Pet. Now that would have been like why couldn't you yeah, put that in a that jar? you could do you could do it. I got it. For, I got it mentally. I'm a photographer, so I can think of weird do from the. How in do you cover up his? You do it from in between his legs. Oh, okay, from yeah, behind. I don't see so so you have, back. So you just see the stream. And then you kind of focus on the head, so it's kind of all blurry, and the stream gets clearer and clearer, and then it hits the, the, the Chia Pet, and you can get the splash out, and you light it from the sides underneath, so it makes the urine almost glow. It would be great. Well, that, they did that with the, the Piss Christ. That was yeah, no, and I, 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 I had to look it up. I've never seen the, the, the P. Christ guy. But they, now you're flamingly Christian, though. Is that offensive? I mean, is it really offensive? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's offensive. Uh, do I want to go burn down an embassy, though? No. But, I mean, are you upset that it exists? 
I, I, I don't get the outrage. Uh, I'm it. not. I'm not outraged uh, in that sense. I'm upset that people think it's funny or or something like that. I, I don't know. I'm See, not. I don't really... think it's. I don't know if anyone thinks it's funny. I think the only people paying any attention to it are outraged right wingers. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it's a valid form of art. How about that? I, I'm. I'll concede that because I'm not qualified to I say mean, one way or. Another. It would be different if he had hand carved the statue. Then, then framed it in the urine, but really, he—it's a collage, and I mean, we did those in like third grade, so eh, whatever, you know, like but it's you, like, you, you took know, a picture of of a of a piece of. But it's that that that, that outrage machine, I guess, at the at the heart of it that Glenn Beck's trying to to tie himself into, or you know, Bill Donahue is—he's um, the Catholic guy in anything. Mm. Remotely, yeah, I know who he is. You know, I don't know disagreeing much about him. with the Catholic Church, and he gets all uh, butt hurt and sure goes nuts. Or how uh, PZ Myers, hey, you, you know more Christian people than I do, and I'm a Christian no, radio host. PZ Myers is not a Christian okay. guy. I was gonna say um, I, I, these people I've never heard of. He's, an, he's a biologist. You'd love him. Oh, I'm uh, sure. But I guess I love all of God's creations. There That's was good. some guy on the internet who took a communion wafer and destroyed it. Okay, like. Cracker, sure. Um, I I buy them at the store sometimes and put but, cheese spreads on them. But to but no, hold on. This guy got death threats. You know, for all the talk of I don't want to burn an embassy in the U.S. Yeah, received death threats because but in did some they kill people's him? minds. Well, no, they're impetent little. Well, the, uh, man see, the, with the, no follow the, through. The, the, there, there's there's several types of extremists. There's the ones that are willing to send a death threat, and there's the ones that are willing to kill the people. I'm not so worried about the death threat people because they don't evolve into the kill people. The, because if they were going to kill, no, no, because if you had the guts to kill somebody, you wouldn't tell them about it. I'm not going to send you a letter telling you that I'm going to. Uh, Take some piano wire and wrap it around I don't know, your man, neck. When you get one of those letters, it's a little disheartening. Y- 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 yeah, I'm your, your sure faith it is. mankind, kind of. I'm sure it is. To me, it's... But thanks to the Powersheet County yeah. <laughs> Sheriff's Department, it's taken care of very quickly. Yeah, see, I, I think for me, it would just be an opportunity to go buy more armor-piercing ammo. I never carried a gun. I never well, saw. see, it, but it's, it's I have good, a lightsaber. I, to, I told you that. There you go. Well, defense. just carry that around with you. And, you know, and, and I, can't, I, 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 I loathe to talk about it. Because of course, if it ever happened, then they would accuse me of, of making it up. But uh, ever since I saw it in the Big Bang Theory, I know another Chuck Lorre production. Um, there's that part of me that wants someone to try to break in, just so I could, you know, because you walk out and they have, they're realistic looking, you know, as a toy can be. But you know, you, you hit the power thing, it goes. It's got the sounds. Can you just imagine how cool it would be to scare off a burglar with one of those? Do you know how stupid that burglar would have to be not to see have seen the FX let's, lightsabers? Let's be honest. If they're breaking into my place, especially to try to uh, acquire material goods, they're not that bright to begin with. Or they're just randomly picking people. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, but it would take it would take some work to break you know, into you know what would even be funnier. And not this, I wouldn't want this to happen to you or anybody else for that matter. But say you did that and then they shot you. Because because the blaster beats lightsaber. Would my no. It does. Not the, if, especially if you're a, a if practitioner you, if you don't have the f- lightsaber. Look, form, look. If, which in Star Wars: The Old Republic, I am. Yeah. If a you Jedi guardian, if you could not harness the power of the Force, then I cannot trust that you could deflect. Well, the lightsaber. yeah. We saw how Luke he didn't so do so good against the training remote. Yeah, but that. The, but he was learning. You got you to be able to. You got to be able to harness it. Once you harness it, then it's a different story. Since you don't have I, any force claims. My only question would be, would my body then disappear? Your, if that your metaphorians are incredibly low. If he were to strike me down, would I become more powerful than he could possibly imagine? No. Probably not. But you never know. But maybe you could get some cool lightning before that happened. I don't know. Unlimited power. Yeah. Um, then I could throw him down a There was a shaft. poster I wanted where Yoda was doing that. One time is pretty sweet. Yoda doesn't throw a light. I know, which is why I wanted the poster because it's a it's a it's a logical fallacy. Because because the lightning thing's pretty much clearly a Sith thing. Yeah, it's although not... if you read um, Yoda Dark Rendezvous, <sighs> I don't know he goes to meet to Count Dooku. Yeah, uh, in uh, on the planet that would later uh, house uh, Darth Vader's uh, castle, Vajun, and in an e- his effort to bring Count Dooku back to the light. You know, through a, a trick of lighting and the force, appears 
as you know, what dark Yoda would look like and scares the hell out of, you know, Sith Lord uh, Darth Tyrannus, a.k.a. Count Dooku. But now we're far... See what happens? You talk about Glenn Beck's bodily waste and bad things Star happen. Wars comes out. You about uh, Star Wars. But there is that part of me that wants to scare off. Because just imagine how cool that would feel. The- just put yourself in that moment. You, t- you, you ignite the lightsaber, right? They yeah. look at it, they stop for a second, and then they run away. I had a college uh, teacher. Like, now, now, if that were to ever happen, no one would believe me. Yeah, well, I know. But, but just imagine how cool, that just that, that one second before reality sets in again, that one second of, the Force is with me. It, just, yeah, it would be pretty the, funny. These are the three. Other than that, I have the Final Fantasy VII Buster Sword, <laughs> which is a giant, like, thick and sharp, it will harm you. Sure. Uh, sword. I could bust that out, too. So, uh... I had a college uh, teacher at a vocational school because I went for computer programming, right? And who claimed he could build a lightsaber. So we called him on it. And then he said that he couldn't show us because it would, we would cause harm. By like an actual. Function. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, I actually uh, have met a guy who does build uh, lightsabers. Sure. He ended up actually working for uh, the company that produced the game, Star Wars, the Old Republic. And they actually used, there's a spoiler alert. You know, you get to a certain point and you build your your own lightsaber, and they used his model of one that he had built, you know, in his garage. But they didn't actually the, function, the right? Model. Well, no, no, it's a video game. They, I don't know. If no, 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 his think, that he. Built. No, no, they're they're purely decorative. No, this guy says he can build one that functions through through, and I, I've been trying for years to figure out how you would even harness a laser beam like that. Well, it's not laser. It's I know plasma. I know theirs is plasma, but state we, of matter. We would have to it's use laser. It doesn't involve science because it's made up. <laughs> no, plasma is a, is a real thing. I understand, okay. but there's, there's a big di- ball of it in the sky that uh, theirs is different. Thing. It's theirs is reflected light through a crystal. We all know how lightsabers are built, Bradshaw. Duh. No, they're not. They're not. They, yes, they lasers. are. They they are. They are. They, all right, they, you want to get in the debate with me? We, I'll I'll have the, the Star Wars. Hey, look. All I know is Jason J- Jason's lightsaber was built off of a crystal. It might have been Anakin's. Well, they all have a crystal a that he got crystal, from the. But it's yeah, not it's just a, a laser. It's a, it's more or less laser. It's a focusing crystal. What yeah, do you want? But, it, how does plasma pass through a focusing crystal if it's not simply just well, light? If you can and fig- what's extreme? If you, configure, con- if you can figure that out, you have a really good shot of starting your own Jedi Order. Yeah. Well, the problem is that what comes through any kind of lens, for lack of a better word, as light focused in such a way that but what does cut that things do? is called a laser beam yeah, but there's not just a hole there's an emitter at the top i i un- i understand so what happens between the focusing uh crystal which just isn't, isn't any regular piece they're of glass. Crea- it's it's all fallacy it's just, well it doesn't yeah work. that's <laughs> it just doesn't work Bradshaw. coming up it's, next it's can a, orcs beat superman it's a laser that has a finite end and it doesn't work well, in yeah, reality it, well the how do you contain now one theory is that it's done through magnetism, which would also be um, why when two lightsabers, it would be two magnetic fields, would then repel, so you could actually have... Sure, I like duel. where you're going with this. Uh, though the, I guess that would mean that Jedi could never carry uh, credit cards or an iPod. Because a magnetic field what that a, strong would erase any... You know, how come they didn't have iPods in the... You know, that this they shows you... Them. you they, they who implants. doesn't need an iPod? iPod. Well, I agree. I mean, they're just at least some. I use my phone. I don't actually have an iPhone, so I use a non <laughs> iPod. But, but okay, they're, they're already complaining. I only have an hour, and I'm talking Star Wars again. Oh well, they need to. You're a Star Wars nerd. I know. And your producer is a Star Wars nerd. Try to hide it. And I think combined, we've read every Star Wars book out there Probably. at least once. Yeah, except for the Young Jedi series. I don't. I've read a couple of them, but they were too that. boring. All right, let's take a break and get back to uh, the new... Get to high school sports and weather. No. Yeah. Uh, we'll get back to uh, actual issues. Because there, there, is, there are actually things happening uh, in the world. I know it's um, more than just the war on Christmas. Uh, and we'll get to some of them when we return. Uh, email me at radiobradshaw at gmail.com. The war on Christmas. Especially if you have a, a, style. A, 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 a schematic or a blueprint of how a, a real lightsaber would work. I'd love to see that. Um Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash uh, Radio Bradshaw. Anne-Marie Cox retweeted me today. I feel important. Hey, did you see, though, 
the War on Christmas Gondom style? Uh, yeah, we'll talk. We'll probably do that tomorrow. I forgot my thumb drive, so I didn't bring in the, the video. I thought it was originally an assault on uh, epileptics, but uh, turns out it's Gondom style. No, you sent it, uh, me a link last night, uh, which I believe is the the fat man and little boy of the War on Christmas. Which has that even started yet? Like, I, I don't know yet. Is Bill O'Reilly crying about it? I already bought all my Christmas stuff, so I'm just going to skip the war this year. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I do my best. I try to keep the Jesus in Black Friday, and mm-hmm. there's only one Black Friday. It happens around Easter. I don't know what this crap is. It's called Black Friday, where he uh, dies on the cross. Black Friday. I don't. Know. Oh, I don't really understand why they chose to name. Because he was black. Oh, I sorry, forgot. Rick Santorum. I forgot. Uh, <laughs> I thought he was Asian. Is 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 because have you seen That's the Asian? That's Siddhartha Gautama. Have you seen the Asian Jesus though? They have an Asian Jesus. Seen Ichiro? Is that in, in, in some of the Asian churches, even in Des Moines, we have an Asian rendered Jesus. Not bad. It's probably closer to reality than you know the Chuck Norris. It, yeah, it's you know, more super realistic. Ripped abs, like dude. You, you that, like that he worked out though? Let's be honest. I don't think they had like plyometrics back then. I don't think he was uh, hitting the anytime fitness. Everybody, everybody knows he used the total gym. Is that the Chuck Norris? I don't know. Yeah, it's totally okay. the Chuck Norris. All right, we're taking a break, and we're going to reset because we have gone way off uh, track. But more crazy uh, will come. Time Magazine uh, is thinking about maybe slutting it up a bit. And uh, a follow-up. Uh, about when, time they caught up with National when Geographic. You, when you thought uh, things couldn't get crazier in right-wing land, oh, they can. Crazy, yes. Crazier than Glenn Beck's bodily fluids. Next, uh, here on the Bradshaw Show of Cast One Live. Thanks for watching. Back right after this. Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I am administrative manager. I am the senior technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do. And if we guarantee it's going to be a good experience for you or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee. All of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs> you don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did was perfect. It was great. <laughs> Keep going, though. I like this. <laughs> Just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do... I mean, fixed rider, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. It's time to start. Rock concert movement number one. Basic head bob. Ready, go. 
All right, 214 Bradshaw with you. We're resetting. We got our Star Wars talk out uh, during the, the break. Uh, the problem with the magnetic field holding me the lightsaber is it'd be like 10 times hotter than the sun. Turn everyone to ash. So that would. You're digressing again. Less than Back useful. on topic. Back on topic. All right. Um, so Time Magazine does their, their person of the year every year. I've sure. won. I mean, you've won? Well, that year they did all of us. Oh, so we're all technically. That was a cop out. Uh, absolutely, but at least it's, it's something I can put on the resume. You know, <laughs> you should. Times first of the year, tied. You know, and um, but they released their their forty candidates. This is kind of the the trial balloon. They want to see what you know reaction is going to be, and it's good publicity uh, thing. But they put uh, Sandra Fluke in there. Oh yeah, I've sell that. And, oh, Lord, uh, the right wing is losing their minds. Um, now, again, uh, Senator Fluke by herself, probably, no. Well, may, maybe uh, top 40. But as a, you know, a to- token, probably not the best thing to say about uh, minority. But you, as a symbol of, you know, forces that shaped the election, that shaped the year, that will shape the country. Uh, I think she absolutely fits. Um, in the Republican Party of, you know, legitimate rape. Um, maybe, uh, you know, her helping expose um, uh, the right-wingers. Because again, it, what, what started with Limbaugh uh, carries on, you know, to this day. You know, Fox is, Fluke is a poster child for the Santa Claus presidency and the food stamp president. And this was, you know, said um, like, you know, yesterday, not uh, before the election. Uh, Fluke's nomination will put her up there with Adolf Hitler and Yasser Arafat. Uh, the Breitbart uh, people freaking out. What gets me about the whole Sandra Fluke thing is that no one actually argues with what she said. Like, I wonder how many people who don't like her or get angry at the name um, even know what she, you know, spoke about, what she actually uh, said. Um, and while I do thank uh, Sandra Fluke, for exposing, for example, the number of conservatives uh, who believe that I, that birth control is like Viagra and you have to take one every time you have sex. Yeah, Rush, they're not like your pills. They, they work a little differently. Um, if we need to have the talk, um, and considering you're on your wife number four, maybe we do. We need to have a lot of talks. Uh, that's not uh, how it works. Or even the whole argument that, uh, you know, wants free uh, birth control. I should put a little asterisk there. With purchase. Uh, and that would be the purchase of uh, health insurance. Uh, I would like to hear someone try to make an argument that uh, um, with a health care law that uh, removes the copay for preventative care, uh, I would love to hear how birth control doesn't. Uh, come under uh, the banner of preventative. I would appreciate that. Um, I think that would be a a hilarious uh, discussion. Um, But it's just, it's funny, you know, this right wing that we have today, just, well, I guess, you know, once we see their uh, views of, say, science, they will just run from reality wherever they see it. It's like the end of From Dusk Till Dawn, right? Imagine the right-wingers are all the vampires in the bar and they're shooting holes in the, the ceiling. And they run from the light because it burns them. You know, when they see uh, a large gender gap, not in the opinion polls, not... But in actual, you know, voting, the thing that counts above all others. 
and their solution is to, to, to double down, if we just slut shame harder, great things will happen to us. I mean, I guess at this point, just, there is no, you know, hole too deep. That no matter what, Republicans are going to fight hard to come up with the wrong conclusions for everything. Uh, and for that, uh, I guess we thank them. Uh, another little bit. Yesterday, I talked about Saxby Chambliss. Yes, that's his real name, and yes, he is a uh, human garbage. Uh, I believe Saxby Chambliss uh, is what uh, surrounds that little Obama uh, in Glenn Beck's jar. Uh, bad person. I mean, legitimately bad person. Um, but wants to remain elected. I know, novel concept for an elected official, but work with me here. Um, Saxby Chambliss has said that uh, he might be open to uh, comprehensive immigration reform, something we desperately need uh, in this country, uh, and maybe, just maybe, uh, won't be 100% diehard, in, you know, tied to... Uh, Grover Norquist, no tax increases ever under any circumstance, closing loopholes or, or anything, uh, pledge that 90% of elected Republicans uh, have signed. Um, and I told you, we, we already saw the first signs of primary challengers. Another challenger enters. In this case, uh, Eric Erickson. He is the proprietor of Red State. It's a right-wing blog. He's also a CNN contributor and occasionally talks about pulling on his wife's shotgun to shoot census workers back when that was a thing. Uh, he went on and he, he's from Georgia. He was on the Macon City Council uh, for a bit. Uh, but he wrote a 900-word uh, diatribe against Saxby Chambliss, but ended with uh, that he'd been approached by serious people to consider a primary challenge and is giving it Prayerful consideration. Now, I don't know if there's a way to hack into that phone line. Do it, please. Why? Because you'll win in a primary because you're insane. You're on the radio. You're on CNN. Of course you'll beat Saxby Chambliss in a primary. You're a kook. And we need more of those running on the right. The Tea Party and those have been such a help to us. Thank you for Christine O'Donnell, for Richard Murdoch, for Todd Akin, for Sharon Engel. You're doing half the heavy lifting for us. You know, you are the people on your hands and knees helping us tabletop these kooks. So, I guess kudos. Uh, and speaking of weirdness in the Senate, uh, the whole Benghazi affair, which, again, if you live in the bubble, uh, as in the case of Mike Huckabee, uh, the greatest scandal in the history uh, of the United States, worse than Watergate. Their words, not mine. Um, well, the headline here, I think, says it all. Stupidest thing McCain ever said. And mind you, we're talking about a man who said, Sarah Palin, will you be my vice presidential candidate? So the bar is high. And again, remember, John McCain is the guy who skipped a briefing uh, on Benghazi intelligence to complain he wasn't hearing enough about Benghazi intelligence. So, um, But talking to the press, I know, shocking for John McCain, uh, talking about uh, the Benghazi affair, coming up with an interesting comparison. Uh, to there are so many things that have happened. The interesting is finally... We knew in hours all of the details when we got bin Laden. They're making a movie out of it. We're ten week, and ten weeks later, and finally our ambassador to the United Nations, who appeared on every National Sunday show, is now saying she gave false information concerning how this tragedy happened as far as spontaneous demonstration triggered by a hateful video. So what are you saying? Why did we know more about the bin Laden raid than we did the attack on our embassy? Dan, you want to answer this one? <laughs> How did we know more about an event that we planned and carried out? 
than a firefight half a world away. I, the mind boggles. Um, but I think it was Adam Serwer brought up a, a good point from the American Prospect. Watching how, and it, it really is just the right way. It is just the, the foxified, uh, didiot, hanitized uh, residents of Glenn Beck Estate uh, who have worked the, themselves into a, a frothy lather uh, over uh, Benghazi. Uh, but he hypothesizes, and I, I tend to agree with him, if Al Gore had won the White House in 2000, and if Al Gore were president in, in 2001, uh, 9-11 trutherism would be um, like Republican orthodoxy. I, I don't even know if that's in dispute at this point. Something bad happen, happened under a Democrat? It must be a conspiracy. There has to be more to this. Fire won't melt steel. Thermite. Building seven. Raw milk. Wait, sorry. I was getting my Ron Paul arguments uh, confused there again. But in a party that almost has nothing left to peddle but conspiracies. And maybe this is too recent a a change, which is looking how they uh, react to Benghazi as they... They kind of build up these these arguments that are then, you know, cut off at the knees by by facts. You know, was the White House changing intel? No, actually, it came from, you know, intelligence agencies. You have Republican uh, House, you know, members outing CIA annexes uh, live on TV. Because, see, State Department, people know how to talk about these things, and doofuses trying to score political points don't. And, I don't know, maybe it should be common knowledge, never going to get a straight answer out of the CIA about pretty much anything. I mean, they're almost comically incompetent, but that's uh, another topic we should probably delve into at another time. But in their efforts to, to score political points, and, you know, Watch out, anyone who shows up on Fox News to say that out loud. I showed you that video yesterday. Uh, But an effort to to, to score uh, political points. And yes, this one does particularly bug me because I knew, at least of, and tangentially, uh, one of the people uh, involved. um, Who turns out, you know, had died of smoke inhalation uh, after they had set the the place on fire. Um, But trying to use uh, a a tragedy uh, to to beat over the the head. And I'm still, I don't know, what is this grand conspiracy supposed to be? Like, I know there are those on the right who believe that Obama was cheering them on, right? Remember there was that he let them die uh, thing that was uh, there for a couple of weeks. But, you know, you look at at 9-11, the the worst uh, terrorist, you know, uh, attack ever, worst thing since uh, Pearl Harbor. With our modern-day GOP, yeah, I do think 9-11 trutherism would have been uh, bigger than the birthers. All right, so it's time for me to uh, to bounce. I got to get out and buy my Powerball tickets. It's $550 million now. This thing about that, I could win the Powerball tonight and have more money than Mitt Romney. Would that call, could I be president then? Dan, if you get a call saying erase all archives immediately, all right? Oh, no. Doesn't mean I won. Because if you send me that text, I'm going to copy all archives immediately and then really? erase them. Be so ashamed if something mile. happened. How many kids you got there, uh, Dan? I don't know, but I got a lot of guns. Be a shame for them to be orphaned. Yeah, but you can for five hundred million. You can hire people who can deal with guns. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but I have this on tape too. <laughs> or do you? No, I do. Oh, I, I if I win, you'll never know. Um, I will play it absolutely cool until I disappear off the face of the earth one day with my 
filthy lottery money doing cartwheels. And I've talked about my plan. I don't, everyone plans like what they're going to do with the money and how they're going to celebrate. And uh, I plan on how I'm going to get away from all of the moochers and scammers and uh, rip off artists and wannabe financial planners. Uh, that's my uh, lottery dream, which is what you really buy when you buy that ticket. And that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. Um, and if I win Powerball, you'll never know until I just poof, disappear Bruce Wayne style. At what point do you think the lottery is going to go bankrupt with all these mega jackpots? No, up? that was uh, this part of their, their plan. is That was part of raising the price of the Powerball tickets to, to two bucks was to build up these mega jackpots. This one only took a month and a half. To get to to three hundred million, and then it kind of jumps up from there. Uh, folks at Powerball are saying probably within the next year, year and a half, we're going to see a billion dollar uh, prize. We're going to see a billion dollar. Uh, How much are the tickets lottery. these days? Two bucks. I thought I saw somebody spend ten. Is that not our jackpot or our lottery? Well, you could buy five mm, I don't at know. two dollars a piece, and that would be no. They had ten dollars right on them. Maybe but they bought the same numbers repeatedly. I don't know. Maybe another lottery. I don't know. No, see, because if you divide 10 money spent by two, you get five. I understand. Uh, this okay. was two tickets, and they each had $10 printed on the top. But now that I think about it, I think that it was like Indiana lottery or something like that. Oh. It was on, on Krista Bolt, who's one of the producers here, had oh. it on his Facebook. But now I think about it, I think I remember finding out it wasn't the same. By the way, to the, I want to thank the, the people who do um, post online photos of their lottery tickets. So in case they win, oh, how easy would it be to – we're already getting reports of fake currency floating around. How easy would it be to fake a lottery ticket? Let's find out. Let's uh, not. <laughs> so I got to go um, – Pick up my tickets for uh, for tonight, and we'll reconvene tomorrow here at one uh, thirty. Win or not, although if I'm buck naked, covered in Crisco or whatever, going, you all can suck it. I I may have won, but I'm going to try to hide it. Uh, have a uh, wonderful hump day, and we'll reconvene like I said tomorrow, one thirty here on the Bradshaw Show.com. We'll webcast one live. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you tomorrow.